Senator Capico, thank you very much. Senator Kramer, thanks again for joining us and for being a valued member of this committee. Please proceed. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Thank you to all of you. I, this has been fascinating. And I, I've had stovepipe running through my head ever since you brought it up because I think it illustrates a lot of the challenges. But Mr. Paulson, in toxic, you know, in talking about inflexibilities and, and the challenges and stovepiping just within the core, you have a really big stovepipe situation where you do have some of the some of the value of the P3 is that some things are not so core oriented and other things have to be, particularly the river itself and, and how the how that outlet gets built. Um, Maybe describe a little, give us an example. Um, I think you mentioned this to me earlier, an example of where the Corps' inflexibility, perhaps especially timing, didn't sync up with um, the other part of the project and what the consequence of that is. Because I think ultimately this could be an area where maybe legislatively or policy-wise we could help. But you gave me a $3 million example, I think, earlier in, in our meeting. Absolutely, Senator Kramer. Um, so during procurement, it's imperative that you define the project uh, with performance-based specifications uh, such that, that the, the private industry can bid the project appropriately and they can price the risk. Um, if you fail to provide um, criteria for portions of the project, which in, in this case that you mentioned uh, occurred. Uh, so we have two aqueduct structures where we're actually taking a river over the top of the diversion channel. Uh, those aqueduct structures have to maintain biological connectivity in the river um, and, of course, uh, appropriate velocities for fish passage. Uh, prior to the procurement of the, of the private developer, we were not able to get criteria from the Corps. Uh, it was very difficult. Nobody had built one of these structures before. Um, and, uh, and so folks just didn't have a, a user manual to say, this is what the velocities need to be. It wasn't until after procurement that the Corps provided us with guidance on velocities for the aqueduct structures. What that resulted in was a three and a half million dollar um, compensation payment to our developer because they had to go back and retool their designs and compensate for the, the criteria that we gave them. That change was bore by the non-federal sponsor. That was not federal dollars. Um, so, you know, from our standpoint, the, the, the more comprehensive you can be um, up front during the bidding process um, it allows the, the private developers to appropriately um, price that risk. Well, one, one of the things I, I would say in defense of the bureaucracy, and I don't say that very much, um, is that sometimes the bureaucracy worries about how we'll respond to a mistake. In other words, we oftentimes punish, <laughs> you know, the bureaucracy if we see something. And I think our attitude toward innovation itself is a, a little bit of the problem. Now, I would say this, though, that, and Shelley says so well, when you combine a natural resource bureaucracy and a military bureaucracy, you've got a really big bureaucracy, and you've got a lot of complications. And that's one of the challenges with the core, in my view, is that, there's sort of a there's sort of an agency without a an agency, and um, on a different core project that I worked hard on with General um, Seminite and trying to identify what the problem was in the bidding process for major infrastructure, I, I insisted on seeing the various proposals and then the responses, the, the bids. So we had to do that in secret and I had to have lawyers all around me. It was crazy, but one of the things I noticed and I asked a core engineer flat out. It seems to me you're anti-innovation. That when, when a contractor you know, responds to a, a RFP and provides a different way to do something, you reject it just because it's a different way. And he, he looked right at me and he said, we believe innovation is risk. So, so it, gets, it gets risked right out of the, it's something that would, could be done twice as fast, half the price they won't do because they, they still have to use those other machines that do it slower. All of that said, um, I think some of this is, you know, we as, as policymakers need to encourage it. I don't know how we do it from a policy standpoint, but we have to find a way for, well, we, we ought to find a way because we, we need to do more things with the same amount of money or less um, and to, to, to build in those incentives in the public sector that aren't natural, that they're natural in the private sector, and P3s are, are a way to do that. Um, but having said that, you know, any thoughts you might have on, on how we could, you know, encourage or inspire the core, incentivize them the right way, would be great. 
Absolutely, Senator Kramer. Uh, our project is all about innovation. So uh, I mentioned previously that we use performance-based specifications. Mm -hmm. um, that allows the private industry to come up with the best uh, way to build our project, the most efficient way to build our project. Now that obviously challenged the core to, con to start building a project of our magnitude without having final specifications and drawings, mm -hmm. um, you know, really uh, kind of caused some concern. And uh, we did see flexibility from the core um, in allowing us to move forward with them as an observer on our portion of the project, which is P3. Uh, and we have seen an immense amount of innovation come from the private contractor, which reduces costs, increase schedule, uh, or, or I mean, reduces schedule um, and provides you know the level of quality that we're looking for. So it's really the the best of all worlds. So if we want innovation, we have to have performance based specifications, um, not prescriptive specifications, which the core is generally accustomed to. It is a clash of cultures. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Not at all. Uh, 